Merry Christmas! Oh, shit. <laughs> it's, it's not Christmas anymore. But uh, fuck doing Christmas specials anyway. I'm here with Deadpoolzilla, of course. You dragged me out here for nothing, Duke. I thought it was Christmas. Here, you can have this box. Yay! It's a fort now. <laughs> I fixed everything. Anyway, uh, we're going to do two Christmas specials because I wanted to do it on Christmas, but I thought of it very last minute, and then after it was Christmas, I was busy or lazy. Yes. So also, we, we, we have videos lately. And we also have a tie-in video. Not really. It's, yeah, <laughs> if you want to... If you want to see the massive event that is Doctor Who Week 4 and get the whole picture, a link below will get you to the first part of our review of The Snowmen, which was a lot of fun. Please go there. Do it now. If you're listening to this at all. Uh, it also will somehow probably tie into the death of Deadpoolzilla and then maybe the next three Marvel events. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Knowing Marvel, they'll make it happen. Um, so, our first one today is The Next Doctor. Because I decided we're talking about it first. And I, <laughs> and I actually saw it today, so... Um, it's much more fresh in my mind. So, um, let's see. Let me sum up the story. The Doctor, after essentially horribly lobotomizing one of his best friends... You can look at it like that. I do sometimes. Uh, goes on to, you know, Victorian England where crazy things happen. And he meets the possible next doctor. Or is he? Who knows? It's not. <laughs> then, oh no, the Cybermen. And they've aligned themselves with this pretty looking woman. Grrr. Because, you know, when I imagine an ally of the Cybermen, I imagine some woman who looks like she escaped from a Victorian novel. Yes, and at the end, they all combine to form Devastator. Yes. Um, they. No, 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 they do something even sillier. They make it... It all basically results in them making Victorian woman a cyber king. Because making a woman a king makes perfect sense in Doctor Who universe. And it is not at all one of the dumbest looking pieces of CGI ever put on television. So that's the story in a small nutshell. What do you think of it? It could be better. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, it, the, the press around this did not help because right before this aired, uh, David Tennant made a big announcement that he got new socks. Oh, and he was leaving the series. <laughs> Though the socks were something more people were happy about. Um, so, and, and, you know, of course, even though they clearly stated he has a few more specials after this, a lot of people are wondering, oh no, is this the one where he leaves? It's called The Next Doctor. Clearly they would name it that way for our convenience. I don't know. They've done more blatant titles before, right? Attack of the Cybermen? Right? Batman Begins? <laughs> I, yeah, so... I'll admit, like when I first watched this, and even it still kind of has this, I am interested in figuring out if that actually was, you know, a future incarnation of the Doctor. Maybe some, you know, weird days of future past Doctor. Or something leading to what it ended up being. A, a big spoiler. <laughs> things a few years old now. So um, he runs into the side and they have to see the USB uh, info stamps. <laughs> They're essentially USB. They plug in. And because, you know, he's a man anything before, he fucks with it and it beams information into his mind. <laughs> Instead of doing the more logical thing of killing him, it just, you know, completely beams in. So much information that it overtakes his memory, makes him think he's a completely different person, and l then led to him, you know, pretending he's the doctor and, you know, doing all these really goofy jokes about how, oh, this is a sonic screwdriver. It makes sound, so therefore it's sonic. I love that joke. 
<laughs> and not to knock David Morrissey's performance, he is really good in here. Oh, I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's definitely one of the high points. He's he's you know, it's fun to see him kind of act like this uh, because he acts like a like a parody of the Doctor. <laughs> he's you know, he's just like stand back, person, I'll defend you. <laughs> Sonic screwdriver, Rosita! And then when, you know, he stops saving the world from the one of the dumbest additions to the Cybermen. Not the dumbest, that comes at the end of the story. <laughs> I kind of remember liking those weird Cybermutt things. But the more and more I realize it, why do you really need these things? Yeah. And it doesn't help that these are supposed to be the Mondas Cybermen. Yeah, I, I, they, I think they were trying to make that transition by the. I did like the design of these things. You know, it's just this cool kind of rusty mask, and you know, they have like a cloak on. I thought that looked kind of cool. Once I realized they just act like dogs, it was completely diminished any coolness factor. Yeah. And they've never been used again, thankfully. I think, they, I think they realized, oh, wait, these are terrible. Which sucks, because they're not, you know, I can't imagine they're the most complicated costumes in the world. And then replaced where we got the return of the Cybermats. Yeah, we. I guess that was a trade-off. Um, but, but, yeah. Um, the, well, the, the, until the series, the rest of the series, the rest of the series, there hasn't really been a modern Cyberman until Neil Gaiman comes along. Yeah, once Neil Gaiman shows, hopefully, it will be that series, which I have all my hope, and it'll probably will be. Uh, we uh, best we can do. Yeah. Even then, it's, it shows the Cybermen getting their ass kicked by the dialects. Yeah, they're just about something else. And what else? What else is there to mention? Um, I liked Rosita. Yeah, she was cool. Um, I think, yeah, I know she was a total parody of both Martha and Rose. That, that was the whole thing about, you know, the, the the Morrissey doctor and the whole shtick. But she was never annoying. Yeah, she could have easily been annoying. And thankfully she wasn't. She was very careful. Even though she did have this very uh, headstrong personality she did come off as very caring to morrissey's character mm -hmm. uh i'm trying to think of, oh let, let's talk about the, the i can't i watched it today and i always forget the woman's name who becomes uh, the cyber king it's mercy her first name's mercy oh so after lex luther fired her she traveled back in time yes. and became the cyber king of course well i'll say this much she's basically the same she basically Richard E. Grant's character from The Snowman with a little bit more personality. I know. I spoke. That's what I so thought. Like, she's all she really does is like the Cybermen, and she's just you know she just talks a little. And she, I'll give her this: she at least you know knows how to stand around and kind of look intimidating. And the problem is, like, I don't remember. I I can't remember this, but how did she get hooked up with the Cybermen, and why do they need it? Like. Why do they need specifically her, and why did she get hooked? How did she get hooked up with them? Is my question. I keep forgetting that. I I I don't really. They try to stop caring. It's like I, this isn't making sense. <laughs> I think they like. If I'm right, they you know they somehow got hurled back here after what Tenant did to them in Doomsday. The, <laughs> the actual and um, uh, I, I think it has to do something with I don't know <laughs> it's, it's hard to really you know keep up here and the other thing is like there's that scene where the Cybermen are using children to build the Cyber King and all I could think was does this remind me of Temple of Doom we are the Cybermen. We control armies of children now. 
Just, just, yeah, just fight. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. You could have used the the the, the homeless or the poor. <laughs> no, you could. <laughs> yeah, if you give them fucking breaks, like God, like I never thought of that until you really brought it up now. But yeah, that's wow. This <laughs> I had a feeling this. Well, to be fair. Um, uh, uh, I, on the, on the, uh, DVD to series four, you know how, um, uh, 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 all the other stories, the, you know, the episode of that Christmas special would lead into it, like, uh, the end of series three led into Voyage of the Damned, which we'll talk about next. They were going to have something like that at the end of series four, where Tenant's just, you know, piloting the TARDIS, and all of a sudden, for no explained reason, the Cybermen just pop up out of nowhere, right behind him. <laughs> but uh, th they changed that, and it's not at all brought up here in the story. And they ditched that very, like, very early on, because they figured, we just had this really sad moment, and we just, you know, wrapped up a lot of stuff. <laughs> Let's not just spring something up on him like that. Let's have him, you know, calmly walk into this. P plus, I highly doubt the, the reason they would sneak in wouldn't make sense. Oh, crap. I, we were supposed to teleport to my... We were supposed to teleport to this car in battle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. There are some other good scenes. I mean, I love that scene where, where um, Tenet and Morrissey are talking and they're investigating the dead, uh, the dead priest's home. And I just love that scene where Tenet opens the door, sees the Cybermen, is like, okay. I, I like where he like, gets the image step out and he you know, shows all the images, same exact effect, could be used next season. I laughed at that when I because I forgot about that until I saw the next Doctor. I'm like, I saw that before. Oh yeah, the, the 11th hour, only with Tenet's face. Y yeah, no, Tenet isn't Again, my because I really wasn't getting into it, so my mind's kind of going to places. Tenant's face was there at the end too, you know, because that's like, oh wait, that's you or something. I, I clearly, I think I clearly remember a scene like that. But it's all the same shots. That's what I love. Yeah. It's not even you know like replace Tenant's face. <laughs> no, no, no. It's changing a face would be expensive. Um, and of course. Uh, Morrissey's character going commando with info stamps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, I'll admit, there, there are some fun moments, but it's really forgettable. I'm sorry. If you like this, fine. But... Yeah, I'm not knocking it. I, uh, I, I think it's a fun episode. I mean, it's nothing memorable. It's just something you can sit down and watch as just, you know, something fun. It, it it has no real. Um, sometimes I I I don't really feature it that much because it has no. There's no consequences to this story at all. Probably yeah. because when, when when he was writing it, they were like, you know what, I got this big plan about building up to his death with the other specials, and you know, just you know, putting all that stuff here would probably make it feel less Christmassy. Yeah, let's give him you know, let's give him something a bit of in Christmas specials. I think they can get away with being a goofy romp. And that's why I, you know, this, the cyber king thing's silly, but I, I can't help but smile at it. Yeah. Cause it's part of a Christmas special. And let's face it as bad as it looks, the idea of just a giant robot attacking Victorian London. is one of the funnest things I can think of. Oh, Oh, can we get him via an air balloon? <laughs> Oh, oh, can we talk about the Cyber King now? Oh, let's do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, for those who are wondering, the Cyber King is a giant cy steampunk Cyberman that the Cybermen want to use for something. For evil. <laughs> yeah. That's no real... <laughs> like, when I heard... When they were building up to this Cyber King thing, I was just like, okay, they're... They're going to have, like, a Cyberman costume come out, and his helmet's going to be gold or something. It's going to be, like, the next Cyber Controller or something. It's going to be something like that. Once I saw this thing assemble and stand up tall, 
first time, and every time I see it, I am speechless on how much I love it. It is, again, one of the one of the worst effects ever. But damn it, <laughs> this guy, it's so it's, with a, it, it's like a Megazord from the 18th century. <laughs> I, I really do. And it's funny, too, because the woman is now calling herself the Cyber King, and she's sitting there with an evil smile, with a goofy strap thing strapped on her head. That's shooting. when I loved her. Like, before, she was just kind of, I'm evil. I'm, and then she just full on goes, I rule all of Cyber Kingdom. I wish she said Cyber Kingdom, but she just, you know, goes in off. And, and the doctor, like, and the way he does it, this was kind of stupid in, you know, their first modern appearance. He makes her feel emotions and things start to explode. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand why it would... Okay, overload them to a point where, you know, maybe they would shut down fine, explode. Really? <laughs> I, I don't... Plus, I think it would have been really funny if all of a sudden she's like, no, I don't care, I like this. Smash. Yeah, that's my thing. It's like, why did she freak out now? She clearly doesn't mind working with the Cybermen. That's always my thing, where... Like, like you know, you... I, I swear there's probably a scene in, in a Cyberman story somewhere where there's a guy who's just so excited to be this way. Dude, dude, I can totally lift a boat now. <laughs> Check it out. Check this out, man. We're so metal. <laughs> Someone had to be excited to realize they look like that. That's all. There are people who, with all the people who do really goofy body piercings, that's their wet dream. <laughs> Uh, so, I, I, there's probably more, but it didn't stick out to me. I think the one thing, I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me was, well, two things actually, and they're both at the end when Morrissey, Morrissey's character has that big chant of, you know, let's cheer for the doctor. You know, he never asked to be thanked. Let's thank him now. And, yeah, I uh, it. it was, it was, <laughs> good, but special. yeah. And then the final scene between him and Morrissey, where he's just telling them, you know, you were never alone, Doctor. I will be your guiding spirit. <laughs> I I liked that. That was, and I love the fact that you know he's like, you know what? Fine, I'll 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 eat with you. Yeah. As long as no one sneaks into my ship. <laughs> I, I I swear he probably saw someone sneak in and threaten their lives. No. You don't do that anymore. Um, and then Moffat explained why no one remembered the Cyber King. Yeah. <laughs> I want to remember that thing. <laughs> I want them to make that as a giant toy. Like, like you know, the, have you ever seen that giant Galactus figure? Yeah. I want the Cyber King in that scale. <laughs> yes. And then I want, like, a little, like, play set where David Tennant, you know, the Temp Doctor has to be in an air balloon with his info stamp arm gauntlet. <laughs> so I can reenact that scene whenever I want and make the Cyber King topple. Yeah. And the other thing, like, you could have the Cyber King's chest pop open. You have the little woman in there with this evil Cyberman. I have, one, I have a Cyberman hanging off its arm. I mean, that thing as a toy would be pip, man. So, I, I'm i done. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, well, we'll see you guys in Voyage of the Damned. Damn us all.